to another edition of History in Your Own Backyard. I'm Danielle, and today we're talking to Mr. Dan Rensing. We're standing at the Ohio-Indiana State Line Marker. We have so much more to share with you. Talk to you soon. Thanks so much for taking time out of your day to speak with us, Dan. Very happy to. Well, thank you, thank you. So tell us about where we are right now. Right now we're in Ohio, <clears throat> uh, right near the Indiana border, probably a couple hundred feet maybe, at the south end. And this is a very historic area in here. There are two monuments, the one you saw at the opening, and a pair to it about three miles south on an island at the mouth of the Great Miami River. These monuments are extremely important to both the states of Ohio and Indiana in the fact that they are two of only three monuments that are recognized by both states as being on the state line itself. Mm -hmm. um, the state line between Ohio and Indiana was originally supposed to be a prime meridian line, a line going due north from the mouth of the Great Miami River up to a line that um, roughly where Michigan is today. Now, when it was laid out initially <clears throat> in 1798 by Israel Ludlow, he didn't lay it out as a state line, although they knew at that time that this line would probably become a state line. He didn't lay it out that way. He laid it out for the sale of government lands in both Indiana and Ohio. So this was set up as what's called a baseline. From this baseline, people would work off in either direction to lay out the sections, townships, and ranges. When the federal government initially sold land, <clears throat> they sold it in sections, which are one mile square. And they needed some reference to work off of, and that's what Israel Ludlow laid out. Now, as early as 1803, I believe it was, some questions came about as, where is this line? <clears throat> when Israel Ludlow laid it out, they simply put wooden stakes on the ground. These were being lost. They were torn out. Mm -hmm. So both state legislatures, um, well, actually only Ohio had a state legislature at that time. Indiana was still a territory. Mm -hmm. Ohio petitioned the federal government to have this line checked. <clears throat> Nothing happened. Mm -hmm. So the time went on, and they finally did get the federal government to act and agree to it, and that was in 1812. Well, nothing happened again because there was a war going on, the mm -hmm. War of 1812. And it finally didn't get resolved until about 1837, when the federal government appointed a commissioner to come out and look at this line and have it resurveyed. The result of that resurvey is the, is the monument here and the monument on the, on the island mm -hmm. down in the mouth of the Great Miami River. Mm -hmm. And as a result of those two monuments, both state legislatures agreed that they were on the state line. Mm. <clears throat> now, as you travel north from here, mm -hmm. following Ludlow's line and the other surveyors who, who came after him, the line deviates from a due north line, mm -hmm. and it deviates quite a bit. By the time you get to Union City, Indiana, which is roughly halfway up the state, it's about a half a mile too far into Indiana. You go further north, up around Butler, it's about a mile too far off mm -hmm. of being a true meridian line. Mm -hmm. um, this was determined initially in 1892 or so, mm -hmm. I think. Uh, the states were again concerned, where is this line? Mm -hmm. They contacted the federal government again. They asked that it be resurveyed mm -hmm. <clears throat> and the, asked that the United States Coast and Geodetic Survey come in and survey the state line. The United States Coast and Geodetic Survey said, wait a minute, <laughs> you're asking us to survey almost 200 miles of line. We can't afford it. <laughs> what we will do, however, is we will test the line for you. We will check its location in three spots. Mm -hmm. This spot down here, mm -hmm. the one up at Union City, and mm -hmm. one further north. And mm -hmm. that is how they determined that the line was off by as much as a mile mm -hmm. by the time you got up to Butler, Indiana. Mm -hmm. Coast and Geodetic Survey recommendation was that the two states should get together and resolve this issue as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. Now that was what, 120 years ago? Mm -hmm. And wow. what has been done on it? Right. Nothing. Right, right. So right now, I mean, 
has the line been surveyed in the last several years or what does that look like going forward? Will they continue to survey it? I mean, considering that they started the project in 1803, <laughs> it took them 34 years to actually place the marker. And then in 1892, they were doing more work. What does it look like now? We're in the 2000s. We're in the 2000s. The line is not going to change from where accepted monuments are in the ground right now. Okay. And, and they run the entire length of the line. They run from anything from small nails in the road to large concrete monuments set in the road or on the side of the road. Mm -hmm. The de facto or the as fact line as it exists today is not going to change. Okay. Even though if you look at the enabling acts of both Ohio and Indiana, it calls for a prime meridian, a due north line, and it's not a due north line. It's mm -hmm. not going to change. Okay. So we are on the state line. <laughs> we are on the state line, yes. It's not going to change. It's not going to change. The Supreme Court is not <laughs> going to step in and say, you're going to move it. All right. Sounds good. Was well, there any other information that you'd like to share with us about this line? Well, we did do a resurvey of it in 1999 and mm -hmm. came up with the same results as the okay. Coast and Geodetic Survey did. Mm -hmm. In fact, we matched their results within less than a foot in some cases, mm -hmm. uh, which I think is quite phenomenal. We use GPS technology. Mm -hmm. They use star observations and telegraphs hmm. to, uh, to do it over 100 years ago. They did very good work. Mm -hmm. One other thing is the monument south on the island mm -hmm. is identical to this monument mm -hmm. that we just looked at. It sits at the moment about six feet underground. Okay. And it uh, was thought to have been lost. Mm -hmm. And in 1920, late 1920s or mid 1920s, mm -hmm. they were doing work on a railroad bridge that crosses there. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and one of the uh, design engineers for the bridge happened to see this monument. It had been uncovered again by mm -hmm. a flood, and he said, That's important. I'm going to reference it. Mm -hmm. And he did. He made references to it mm -hmm. so it could be recovered. Mm -hmm and file those references with the county courthouse of Hamilton County okay. and in Dearborn County. Okay. And by using those references, <clears throat> we have been able to recover that monument mm -hmm. since then and place a, what's called a surface marker on top of it. So it can be found again. It's not easy, but it can be found, mm -hmm. and it is still there. And if people wanted to go and read up about that information, where would they go again? Well... <laughs> You mentioned Dearborn County. Dearborn County mm -hmm. and Hamilton County both have um, references in their deed records to this thing. Okay. They could also contact the, uh, the county surveyors mm -hmm. of Dearborn County or Hamilton County. Mm -hmm. And there's a, an organization known as the His Surveyors Historical Society. Mm -hmm. Roger Woodfill mm -hmm. out of uh, Dearborn County here mm -hmm. would be the one to contact on that. He can give you a load of information. Okay. On uh, old surveys in the area. Mm -hmm. Well, one thing's for certain, this line is not moving, right? This line is not moving. <laughs> All right, that's what matters. Well, thanks again for taking time out of your day to talk with us, Dan. Gladly, really Danielle. really appreciate it. And thank you for having me on here. Not a problem. Have a great day. You too. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks so much for tuning in to another edition of History in Your Own Backyard. Today, we spent time talking to Mr. Dan Rensing about the Ohio-Indiana State Line Marker. I hope you enjoyed learning about it. Remember, travel slowly and stop often. See you later.